Good Saturday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onig with a quick look at your forecast from the area tonight. Looking again at some fairly quiet conditions. Maybe seeing some more active weather in the Mid-South as we get into the course of the next couple of days. We'll talk about that and your forecast into the first full week of October coming up here in just a little bit. We do have, again, the possibility of some pretty warm temperatures out there as we go throughout the next couple of days, rounding out September is going to be very toasty and then also looking again at some maybe cooler weather as we head farther off into the first weekend of October. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. Got any weather reports out there? Let's do some amateur meteorology. Let's see some of your weather reports from around the Mid-South area. Wind, temperature, rain gauge information, high, low temperature. Uh, drop your, those into the comments section and I'll read the weather reports as they get uh, posted on by. Coming up in just a little bit, we'll take a look at some of the weather pictures that you have sent in on Facebook. Not too many on Twitter these days, so we'll send a few of those coming up in just a little while, so stay tuned for more on that. If you've got some, please tweet them to me at aonic underscore wreg3, or you can reach me again at any of these social media networks, or you can get to me again through wreg.com slash weather. If you can't stick around for the whole forecast, it's in the red bar scrolling by at the bottom of your screen. Social media information in the blue bar beneath that, down a little bit one more row. So if you'd like to see a little bit more about what it looks like into and around the area. Stick around for more and we'll talk more about the forecast coming up here in just a bit. We'll also talk about the tropics as well so stick around for more on that. Overnight again decently cool. Shouldn't be too bad across much of the area but we should see again temperatures dropping into around the lower to mid 60s and could be some patchy fog again tomorrow morning so that could be something to take a look at there. Ripley, Mississippi 83 degrees. Avery Nellum ready for colder weather. A lot of people are looking at that as well. Quanell, so real Stanford, two mile per hour winds out of the southeast. Thank you very much. Yolanda Robinson, 86 in Hughes, Arkansas today. Thought it was fall. Well, calendar says one thing, temperatures say another, so we'll see how well that works out in the next few days. Uh, Katie slaughter Rutenberg from Dyersburg, beautiful day today. Hot in Marvell, Arkansas. Donald Cavett. Thank you very much uh, for that one, or Cavett, sorry about mispronunciation, uh, if that was one. Bobby Ralph Costley, happy National Coffee Day back to you. Hope you enjoyed your uh, cu cup of joe for today. Robinsonville, Steve Christian, welcome to the show for this evening and everybody else checking in. High temperature today, this was about as pretty typical late September as you could possibly get. Numbers back in the lower 80s. Low temperatures, again, back in the upper 50s, just above normal. No precipitation, but thanks to all that rain we got last week, we're doing a pretty good job of keeping everything pretty well, again, on the fill for the rain gauge, about 9 inches plus for right now. So good news that it's been a very good year for rainfall, but not overly as we've seen in a few years before with a lot of flash flooding going on across much of the area. Lakin, Nicole Willard, Senatobia, 79 degrees today. Felt great, didn't make 80 degrees. That's a rarity out there for today. Marion, Arkansas, 71. Christy Simmons, welcome to the show. A little difficult to see in the glare, but that little pinpoint of light right around there, that's the planet Jupiter being seen. Unfortunately, there are some clouds drifting on through, so you may not be able to see too much. This from our Cotton Exchange camera in downtown Memphis. Traffic is moving in almost all directions at 240 in Poplar for tonight. The interstate is open. Eastbound Poplar is open. Westbound Poplar not so much. We've got everything closed down here. The exit ramp to Westbound Poplar and any traffic going across Poplar Westbound is being routed off onto the interstate. That's that Memfix 4 construction going on. Otherwise, everything's moving along pretty nicely, so it looks pretty good across much of the area there. Storm Tracker 3S radar, nothing showing up in the way of precipitation. Should be staying that way into the rest of tonight and into tomorrow as well. So pretty dry conditions out there, although we are seeing again a few clouds drifting on through, making their way up north of I-40 tonight. Not a lot, but at least some of them anyway. Calm winds, 68 degrees. Scott Jarvis in Banner, Mississippi. Thank you very much, and thanks for all the great pictures you've seen sent in before. Thank you very much. Greg Coble, happy birthday. Congratulations. Thanks a lot for joining us tonight. Hope it was a good birthday for you. Live real-time on your side weather showing upper 70s to about upper 60s to around the lower 80s. 
Still pretty toasty around Memphis International Airport and a few lower 70s out there as well. This information on your computer system, again, go to this website address, wreg.com slash weather, and click on the weather bug icon for more information about live real-time weather near your location. Rest of the evening, the HRRR forecast, that's the high-resolution rapid refresh model that does a very good job of short-term forecasting about 18 to 24 hours out. Use this a lot. Again, to give you an idea of what's coming up today, tonight, tomorrow, stuff like that. Longer range forecasting, well, we'll take a look at that in the tropics coming up in just a little while. Heading out for a dinner and a movie, late stuff going on tonight. Take the jacket with you because after News Channel 3 at 10, temperatures will be dropping again, in some cases back into the lower 50s in parts of the Mid-South area, but mainly upper 50s to around 60 for the metro area, south and along of I-40 for the rest of the day today. So looking at some pretty chilly numbers into tomorrow morning or so. Alan Bogard from Corpus Christi, Texas. Haven't been down that way in quite some time. Thank you very much. Paulette Anders, 70 degrees and mild in Bartlett. Thank you very much for that weather report. Noontime tomorrow, temperatures again going back into the high 70s to around about the lower 80s. And again, this is decently typical for this time of the year. Tomorrow we may step up a degree or two above that, heading back into around the lower to mid 80s and even warmer than that over the next several days. So this is not considered quote-unquote Indian or St. Luke summer. It's going to be, we haven't hit frosting uh, period yet, so that hasn't uh, been going on just yet out there, but we will see again some warmer temperatures over the next couple of days. Fog could be another problem tomorrow, maybe not quite as bad as this morning. There was a dense fog advisory in effect, and some parts of the Mid-South could see visibilities near or under one mile, so that could be something to, again, keep an eye on into very early tomorrow morning across much of the area. So allow a little bit of extra time to get to where you're going and a little bit more space between you and the vehicles in front of you. Rest of the forecast, running the numbers, again, numbers back in the mid possibly a few upper 80s into tomorrow, but so far we're not getting anything in the way of precipitation out there. When the kids hit the bus stop on Monday morning, when you get ready to head to school, and when you're picking them up from school and heading home for dinner, that's when we're also going to be seeing the possibility of some more showers and thunderstorms out there. So could be some problems with outdoor activities Monday and an almost identical forecast into around Tuesday. Now we've dropped the chances of rainfall from about 50 to 60 percent down to about 30, so more isolated possibilities more than anything else, but still pretty toasty out there for the early part of October. Staying in the mid to upper 80s throughout the rest of the week, yeah, I know it says autumn on the calendar, but we get these warm spells every once in a while. Showers and thunderstorms leave the area by, by about midweek. Tuesday should do it for us without too much going on. And then leaving the area, heading into around next weekend, things are looking a little bit better for the possibility of showers and thunderstorms. Friday night football, Friday outdoor activities right now look pretty good. Weekend looking not quite so good at this point in time. So this is going to be where we see the potential for some more problems with outdoor activities. Otherwise, very warm over the next several days. Finally starting to get back to those nicer fall temperatures by the second week of October, but even that can change, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3 again for more information on that. All right, into the tropics. We did have Kirk down into around the Caribbean. Unfortunately, Kirk has basically fallen apart. The remnants of Kirk are going to continue to wander into the western Caribbean, maybe into the Gulf of Mexico, but it doesn't really look like much for right now. Back into the northern Atlantic, What's left of Leslie picking up a little bit of steam up to about 50 miles per hour tonight. So we have a stronger uh, tropical storm in the northern Atlantic, but it's heading, as you can see, away from this area and not exactly a problem for here. Now back into around and toward the other side of the continent, we've got Rosa, which is a hurricane at about 105 miles per hour. It's been a major hurricane for the last couple of days. That's Category 3 plus. Now it is diminishing as it approaches the Gulf of Baja, and as it goes a little bit farther back to the north, we may see again the potential of this storm system curving up into, of all places, the desert southwest, northwestern Mexico, even eastern California could wind up with a lot of rainfall out of this. So anything, say, east of San Diego, anything west of Albuquerque, if you're traveling anywhere in that area, 
uh, Tucson, Flagstaff, Santa Fe, Taos, down to around portions of around uh, Phoenix. Could be seeing, again, some breezy winds, some heavy rainfall. Again, could be the possibility of some severe weather in there as well as we go throughout the next couple of days. But that's going to be several days before what's left of Rosa heads up this direction. It will not be a hurricane. It will not be a tropical storm. Once these things move over the land surfaces, they lose about 50% of their power because they're no longer over their power supply. So once they're off that and over the land surface, they really start to degenerate, but there could be enough structure left to where we could see some breezy winds and some very heavy rainfall out of this, so please keep that in mind. Mark Miller, thank you very much for a foggy view this morning from around uh, Coro Lake. Thank you very much for that one, and the subsequent picture which I tried to get on here before we did this uh, update, but unfortunately didn't have time to get that in there. But the foggy picture, very nice from that particular location. Not everybody had fog. Rebecca Maddox picking up a great view of sunrise in Bihalia, Mississippi this morning. Thank you very much for that one. And a beautiful view from earlier this week, Dana Walker-Johnson. Didn't get a location on this, but beautiful view of the rain clouds finally starting to clear out and some blue skies coming back in this direction. So a very nice view from Miss Johnson on that. Thank you very much. If you've got weather pictures, we'd love to see them and share them to everybody here. All you have to do is, again, send them to me at austin.onic at wreg.com or, again, go to this website address at wreg.com slash weather or, again, just go right to our web page and just go from there and you can send them on from those locations. Cat my forecast throughout the rest of the weekend on News Channel 3. Welcome to everybody else who's checking in from around the area for this evening, around the Mid-South. Curtis Williams from Fisherville, thanks for joining us. Brian and Amanda Waddle, welcome from Independence, Mississippi. Thank you very much for that one. David Meacham wants the cold to stay because then there wouldn't be any more flies or mosquitoes. Yeah, but then the frogs would be really sad about that. But, uh, yeah, I can understand how that feels out there. It would be nice to get some warmer conditions gone for just a little bit. Coming up in a little bit under a half an hour, join me at about a quarter to nine on my Facebook, Periscope, and Twitter pages if you'd like to know more about what's going on with weather, where the troops are. If you have friends or loved ones stationed around the world, we'll take a look at some of the locations where American military personnel are stationed. Is a nice little salute to everybody out there who can't make it home for the area in here. We're showing again a uh, possibility of more chances of showers and thunderstorms around Okinawa as what's left of a typhoon approaches that area. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. That'll be coming up at about a quarter to nine, so stay tuned again for more on that. Uh, going back quickly, Gene Wilkins, seven-day forecast looking like this, and don't forget you can always rewind the replay of this to take a look at what we've said before. Temperatures again pretty warm over the next few days mid to upper 80s and not getting too much in the way of very cool weather anytime soon. It'd be nice, but we're just not seeing too much of anything about that and more chances of showers and thunderstorms as we go toward back into Monday and Tuesday more than anything else. That'll wrap it up for this edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video online weather blog, Weather Overtime. Again, 8.45 tonight. Join me for an update on weather where the troops are and also an update again on your forecast. We'll have a lot more coming up tonight on News Channel 3 at 10. Kristen Holloway has all the day's news. Megan Rice has a very busy day in sports. And, of course, yours truly with your complete updated forecast. So stay tuned for more on that. Again, if you have any weather pictures, please pass them along to me. Would love to have your works out there and show them off to everybody, so send them to me at austin.onic at wreg.com. That'll wrap it up for tonight's edition of Weather Overtime. Thanks for joining us, and stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of the weekend. Thanks for joining us.